Hello and welcome back to another MBPI 2018 video It is Shim from the Shim Placer. What is poppin? Hope you're having a good day. And today, we are going to be ranking every single team deck in MLBPI 2018 1 to 30. I'm going to say every team on the list that I have ranked here. So how I made the list is I based them on five categories, starting pitchers, so the rotation, the bullpen, the lineup one through four, that's the really meaty part of the lineup, then the lineup depth, so if you have a really top heavy lineup, you won't get a very good score in lineup depth, and then my opinion on the team deck. So then I took the averages, and then I got this list right here. So, I'm going to read you um, the teams uh, 30, through tw 30 through 11 right now. So, the number 30 spot, we have Minnesota. 29, we have Cincinnati. Um, 28, we have the Texas Rangers. 27, we have the Pittsburgh Pirates. 26, we have the San Diego Padres. Um, the... For the 25 spot, we have the LA Angels. 24 spot belongs to the San Francisco Giants. 23 spot belongs to the Chicago White Sox. The 23 spot belongs to the Philadelphia Phillies. 22 spot to the D Diamondbacks. Uh, 21 to the Braves. 20 to the Chicago Cubs. That kind of surprised me. 19 to the Toronto Blue Jays. 18 to the Seattle Mariners. 17 to the Tampa Bay Rays, 16 to the Kansas City Royals, uh, 16 to the Cleveland Indians, 15 to the St. Louis Cardinals, um, then, then we have the Oakland Athletics and the Boston Red Sox, just barely missing the top 10. So, if you want to so how it's going to work from here now, I'm going to um, read you the stat, the overalls that I gave uh, for the top 10 teams. If you want to see what grades I gave to the other teams, I'm going to be posting a picture on my Twitter. So I'm going to leave a link to that in my description below. I'll post it. I'll tweet about it. And you can check it out. I will tweet it shortly after the video is posted. So without further ado, let's get in to number 10 on the list. Oh, and also I'm not, I forgot to mention, I'm not including legend players because uh, this is like a guide for someone building a casual team, not a wallet warrior. So I'm not including legends in this. But no more interruptions, let's get into the video. So, barely making the number 10 is none other than the Baltimore Orioles. So, this team is going to be cured by their offense. Their offense is led by Chris Davis and Manny Machado. Machado a controversial figure, but he ha but regardless, he has some really good cards. Especially uh, some of his live SE cards. And, um, yeah, you got Jonathan Scope as well. He has some really nice cards in the game. He is also going to be leading the team. Mark Trumbo also had a decent season with them. Nelson Cruz was also a really nice card to have on this team. He's a big bopper. He has lots of power, good contact. He may have DNF grade defense. However, he has 89 throwing and 99 fielding, decent running. So now I'm going to tell you what grades I gave the Orioles. Starting pitchers really did not impress me. I gave them a 4. As for the bullpen, I gave their bullpen a 7. Um, Their bullpen, it's honestly not bad. They have Zach Britton, who is just a beast. Johnson, that's a really good pitch mix. Darren O'Day is just there. He is also good. Darren O'Day again. Brad Brock, career high card. Then Pedro Strope as well. These are some really nice bullpen pieces. 
Now for the lineup, 1 through 4, I gave them a 9. I already went over the lineup pieces. And for the lineup depth, I gave them a 9. My opinion on them is a 9. They're a really nice team in this game. Really nice cards. And I... They're... Yeah, they're just a really... Alrighty then, at the number 9 spot on our list is the New York Yankees. This is going to be another team that will be carried by their offense. Why? You got guys like John Carlos Stanton and Aaron Judge, two of the biggest guys in the league. And along with that, you also have um, D.D. Gregorius, and he has some really nice cards. And along with that, you also have Miguel and Duhar, who actually has some really nice cards. Along with, along with Glaber Torres. He has some really nice cards in the game as well. Team, of course, as I said before, carried by their offense. So, here's are the grades that I gave their team. Um, if I can find them on the list here. Starting pitching, I gave them a 6. I mean, sure, they have... Um, guys like Severino, Hap, Tanaka, but honestly, Tanaka, I'd say, is the best pitcher. Severino, honestly, does not have the greatest pitch mix. Um, CeCe Sabathia is decent. He is a good pitcher, but honestly, these are the only two guys that really impress me. Ian Hap is decent, I guess, but... Not he has the stand in Hap has a standard pitch mix, so let's move on. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys the rest of the grades for them. Um, the bullpen honestly did not really impress me either. I gave them a six. They have Oroldis Chapman, Dylan Batansis, David Robertson, Zach Britton, who is actually a really good closer, but. Um, he can also be a relief pitcher. I'd get his relief pitcher card if I built a Yankees team. David Robertson is a good pitcher. Chad Green is meh. In real life, they're all good pitchers. However, in the game, it's a much different story. Chapman is really easy to hit off of. Their bullpen, honestly, just did not impress me. That is why they earned a 6. However, they do have some good pieces, such as Wilson. And Batansis can be decent, I guess. So, and for their lineup, of course, I gave them a 9. I gave them a 9. Just because, you know, you got guys like Aaron Judge, John Carlos Stanton. That's only through 1 through 4. Yeah, we can just keep on going down the list. And for their lineup depth, I gave them a 10 out of 10. Just because there's so many good players to choose from. My opinion on them was an 8. So, without further ado, let's move on in the list. So, the next team on our list is none other than the Washington Nationals. This is a really good team, because this is a team that is led by both their starting rotation and their lineup, which makes them a really dangerous threat to face. Should there ever be a Nationals team deck? You got guys like Juan Soto, obviously Bryce Harper, Ryan Zimmerman as well, along with Anthony Rendon. They're, they're honestly a really nice team and a big threat to face. And if you get put up against a Nationals team deck, you should honestly be kind of scared. Here are the grades that I gave the Nationals. I gave them a 10 on the starting pitching because their rotation is just so good with Scherzer and Gio Gonzalez and Strasburg, so on and so forth. Their bullpen honestly did not impress me. Sure, they have this Felipe Vazquez, which is good. But Clippard is meh. Doolittle is, has a trash pitch mix. So if you have a Nationals team, if you can get their, if you can knock out their starter, you'll be good. Their lineup run through four really deep because you have Harper, you have Desmond, you have um, Zimmerman, 
Uh, you also have Rendon. It just depends how you want to play. And then their lineup depth, I gave them a solid 8. That's because, just as I said, lots of good players in the lineup. And then my opinion on them, I gave them a 7. Uh, by the way, guys, I say the opinions before I do the rankings, so it's, my opinion is not the average or anything. They had a 7.8 average. And the next team on our list, I hate them, the LA Dodgers. Um, As much as they, I say they suck, they're honestly really good. They have a really good rotation, you know, Zach Grinke. This Hugh Darvish card is absolutely lethal. They also have Park, they have Ryu, and obviously they have one of the best pitchers in the game, Clayton Kershaw. So, their rotation is really good. Their lineup is decent, I think. They have guys like Machado, they have guys like Muncie, they have D. Gordon, they have Justin Turner, who I absolutely hate. But I'm gonna be I'm being unbiased in this. They also have David Freeze, he's in there too. But unfortunately, if you wanna get a Dodgers team, it's gonna cost you about two times of what a normal team would cost. So these are but I'm not I'm not factoring price into this list. So these are the rankings I gave them. Starting pitchers, 10 out of 10. Bullpen, 6. Really didn't impress me. Because... <coughs> excuse me. Looking past Canley Jansen, there really isn't a lot of good relief pitches. They're all in the live SE. So sure, they have Madsen, Ryan Madsen. They have Maeda, guys like that. Alexander Floro. But honestly, past those guys, I mean, these guys aren't particularly super high overalls. Most of them, most of most good relief pitchers will have 90 overalls. And, well, I don't think the Dodgers have one 90 overall relief pitcher. Baez, this Pedro Baez card comes close. But they don't have a single um, relief pitcher that has a 90 overall unless you count Kenley Jansen. So, bullpen is full of question marks. Lineup 1 through 4, honestly, really good. I gave it an 8. Lineup depth, I also gave it an 8. My opinion on them is a 7, adding up for an average of 7.8. Tied with the Nationals, but I gave the Dodgers a slight edge. So, the next team on our list, they lost a whole lot of games this season. They're going to lose more games in the future. It is the Miami Marlins, and this is what I love about MLB Perfect in 2018. It's not based off players, how players did in this current year. A team can collect good players over several years, and they will be very good. So that's what the case is for the Miami Marlins. Their team is led by beasts like John Carlos Stanton, Hanley Ramirez, who is really, really good. Then you can have uh, Anderson play like, um, whatchamacallit, third. Marcelo Zuna. I loved having Marcelo Zuna on my team. You can also have Christian Yelich over there. And... Alright, so here are the grades I gave them. For their starting rotation, I gave them a 4 out of 10. Again, really not impressing. They never got starting pitching. That's why they never really could get to the playoffs. Then for their bullpen, I gave them an 8 out of 10. That is because, look, you got c Shack here. That is a really nice card. AJ Ramos, a really nice card as well. <coughs> Excuse me again. Uh, you also got Stecken Rider here. You got Bear Claw. Um, yeah, you've got all these guys that are honestly pretty good. So if I was to ever have a Miami Marlins Steam Deck... I would not use the bulb. I mean, I would not use the rotation very much, if at all. I would stick to the bullpen. 
where I believe that they can shut down a good offense. LeBlanc, I also had him on my main team before. LeBlanc is a really good card. I like his stats. Dunn as well. Some really, really nice cards. Alright, so now we have the New York Mets. So this is a team that is going to be led by their starting rotation. And also, they have big, sexy Bartolo Colon. That makes their team like 10 times better. They also have David Wright, who is really good. Jose Reyes as well. They have some other guys too. Curtis Granderson, Daniel Murphy, M Michael Conforto, and you know, Cespedes. <clears throat> so, these are the grades that I gave the team. 10 on the starting pitching. You, you got Syndergaard, you got DeGrom, you have Mats, and other guys as well. 8 on the bullpen. The, they have Familia. They're going to get Edwin Diaz soon because he was traded to the Mets. I forget who else they had. Um, They have Blevins, who has a good pitch mix. And Addison Reed. Really nice players. Their lineup 1 through 4. Pretty decent. Because you have... Where is he? You have David Wright. Who is pretty good. Jose Reyes. And you can have Reyes again. Uh, but you know it's Cespedes. Really nice. You can also have Carlos Beltran who is a beast. That is a really nice card. Then lineup depth. I gave them an 8. As I said, there's lots of good players on the New York Mets. And my opinion on them, I gave them an 8. So, the number four team is none other than the Milwaukee Brewers. They really blew up this season. They got, they added some really nice pieces. But this is a team that is led by the offense and the bullpen, which is really what counts in this game. Starting rotations don't matter too much in this game, unless you want to go that way. But, in my opinion, bullpens are super important. You got guys like Christian Yelich, Ryan Braun, Lucroy, Weeks, Gomez. The list goes on and on. Where is he? Lorenzo Cain. Look at this team. It's stacked. Jesus Aguilar. Gene Segura. Look at this team. It's stacked. Domingo Santana. Travis Shaw. Look at the guys that are getting buried here. See the high-class players. More Braun. Jonathan VR. Screwed. Jeanette isn't that good. Um, Gomez. Really good players. And then take a look at their bullpen. Jeffress, who has a really, really good pitch mix. Josh Hader, who is filthy to face. Then Axford. I believe, if I'm not wrong. Um, where are you? You got, you got Knable also. Where is he? Joaquim Soria. That is a really good card. I've faced Soria. He's not easy to get a hit off of. These are really good players. This is a really good bullpen. I really like the Brewers. I really like what they have. That is why they are four on the list. Starting pitches, I gave them a seven. Um, who do they have? Uh, they got Grinky. They got Davies. Davies? I don't know. Gallardo. They got Fires, who drilled Stanton. You got more Gallardos. You got Wayne Miley. You got the boy, Julie Chassin. I could go on and on about this team. I kind of already have. The, the lineup went through four. I gave them an eight out of ten. As I said before, really good. Uh, and then lineup depth, I gave them another eight. We literally just went through a whole list of players. That are good on the Milwaukee Brewers. My opinion on them, an 8. That gives them an average of 8.2 across the stats. Let's move on to the number 3 spot on our list. Alright, so number 3 on our list is the Detroit Tigers. Another team that is rebuilding, but they've accumulated some really good players. 
And you have a true ace leading the rotation in Justin Verlander. Miguel Cabrera. That's just a beast of a card. Not much more to say about it. Victor Martinez, who can play catcher. I really like him. Then you know it's Cespedes. You've also got guys like J.D. Martinez, Just Dingers, Castellanos, Wilson. That's a filthy card. <clears throat> Green, Kinsler, Upton, Iglesias. Where is he? Um... Scherzer, also Mad Max Scherzer. The list goes on and on and on. This team is just so deep. I love this team. Starting pitches, I gave them a 7. Uh, bullpen, I gave them an 8. Um, Let's see. At, let's take a look at their um, bullpen. They have Verhagen. They also have this other Wilson. So you can have two Wilsons on the same team. That's cool. You've also got guys like Benoit, who is this decent. Uh, shoot. Yeah, their bullpen is honestly looking pretty good. Their lineup one through four. I, I'm going to give them an eight. It... Mm, I probably should have given them a 9, but um, too late now. Then lineup depth, I gave them a 10 out of 10, giving them a, and then my opinion was 9, giving them a total average of 8.4. So let's move on to the number 2 spot on our list. Alright, so number 2 on our list is none other than the Colorado Rockies. I know what you're thinking. Why is Colorado so high up on this list? Because Gameville does not know what the cores of field effect is. For example, you want to see an example of the cores field effect? Look at how many career high players there are. Padres have one. It's Chase Headley. One. These guys have like, what, seven? Look, you've got Charlie Blackman. I had his war card on the team for a while. I liked him. LeMayhew, look at his contact. Then you, of course, Nolan Arnado, Julie Chassin, Nishak, Matt Holiday, who never touched home plate. Never. And then uh, Jimenez, Tulowitzki. <clears throat> then you got Carlos Gonzalez, manning the outfield. Adam Ottavino, Kyle Freeland, who was a Cy Young candidate in Coors Field. Trevor Story, really nice card. The depth on the team is so amazing. Cause, um, and their stats are just so juiced thanks to the Coors Field effect. Their rotation, I gave them an 8 out of 10. Because you got Kyle Freeland, you've got Julie Chassin, you got Obaldo Jimenez, you've got, um, who are some other guys? Who are some other guys? You've got Herman Marquez, that is a really nice card, look at those stats. You've got Hamill if you really wanted, you got John Gray as well. Their bullpen, man, they have some really nice bullpen pieces. They have Adam Ottavino. <clears throat> And they have Russin. This is a really filthy card to have. Nishak, as I talked about before. Um, yeah, Nishak. Um, Belissel. Only 88 mil for an 86 overall. That is a budget beast right there. And then for the lineup 1 through 4, I gave him an <clears throat> gave him a 9 out of 10. <clears throat> Really nice. For their lineup depth, I gave them a 9 out of 10. Really nice there as well. You saw how many players I had there. Um, my opinion on them, I gave them an 8 out of 10. And their average was 8.4. That has them tied with Detroit. And I, de I decided to give them... Colorado the slight edge just because of how many players you could have on the bench that are just that good. <clears throat> so, without further ado, the number one team on our list is none other than...
the 2017 World Series champions, the Houston Astros. <clears throat> They have some really good players. You got George Springer, Jose Altuve, Alex Bregman, Josh Reddick, Ho Carlos Correa, Hunter Pence. The list goes on and on. These guys are just so good. You got the great white shark, Tyler White, Evan Gaddis, Marwin Gonzalez. Their team, man, it's honestly so stacked. The lineup alone and then you look at their starting rotation, and you're like, wow. You got Garrett Cole, Justin Verlander, Carlos Morton. Um, what's his name? I can't even think. Uh, Colin McHugh. Dallas Keuchel. Another Dallas Keuchel. Lance McCullers Jr. So here's what I gave them ranking-wise. Their starting pitchers, I gave them a 9 out of 10. I don't think they're good as the New York Mets rotation, which I gave a 10 out of 10, nor the Nationals rotation, nor the Dodgers rotation, which all got 10 out of 10s. <clears throat> then their bullpen, I gave them a 7. They have some really good players that I underestimated. For example... This, um, Roberto Osuna, I face this card, he's a really devastating card to face. Davinsky, as well. Got Will Harris in there. Um, you got Qualls. Uh, Presley, 87 overall. Really slow windup, I honestly hate his windup, but he's still a good player. McHugh, another Osuna. And you also have Rondon, who is honestly a, a really good pitcher. I've seen him on the Cubs. I've faced Cubs on BPI Gaming use him. When he used him, he's a really good player. Yeah. So now, the, um, the grade they got for the lineup 1 through 4 is a 9. Their lineup is just so stacked. <clears throat> Leading off would be <coughs> Leading off for them would be Jose Altuve uh, Josh Reddick and Then Josh Reddick Or Hunter Pence Whichever one you wanted to do George Springer and Carlos Correa That's just really good If you think about it Then the lineup depth I gave him an 8 out of 10 Then my opinion 10 out of 10 on them that gives them a grand average of 8.6, and that is the highest average out of any play, out of any team that is on this list. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like. Do you disagree with my list? Let me know in the comments down below. Join my Discord server, debate with me. And be sure to look on my Twitter so you can see the grades that I gave every single team. This this um, thing, uh, this list took me about two hours, two and a half hours to research and make. I went through every single team, looking at every single player on every single team. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope it helps you pick out the right team. And then I hope it helps you win games. That's what I'm here for. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out for now.